Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go over what exactly luminosity is in the context of particle physics. And if you're just here to figure out what it is, I can tell you straight away that luminosity, L, is equal to the flux of incoming particles multiplied by the number of targets we have available to hit. That's what luminosity is. But if you're here to figure out where exactly this idea comes from and how exactly it was derived, stick around. So, luminosity appears in a bunch of branches of physics. It turns up in astronomy when you're dealing with stars and how bright they are. It turns up in electrical engineering where you're dealing with light emitting bulbs or LEDs and looking at how bright they are as functions of current and voltage. But in this case, we're looking at what luminosity means in the context of particle physics, and it's slightly different from your notion of brightness, and it might even be more generalized. So the bread and butter of particle physics is collision experiments. We have these really tiny particles, we don't know what they're made of, let's smash them together and look at the clues. So consider a scaled up version of this to classical length and time scales. A really easy intuitive example would be pool or snooker. So if I draw out a snooker setup where we have a white cue wall, these red and yellow targets that we're trying to hit. And the thing about each of these targets is they each have a diameter where if our incoming cue ball is within this range, so the trajectory of our incoming white cue ball is within that range, a hit will happen. And if the trajectory is outside that range, no hit will happen. So that makes sense intuitively. You need the paths of the white ball to sort of intersect this area with either the red balls or the uh, yellow balls for some hit to happen. If it doesn't intersect anything, no hit happens. Now if we scale this down to the quantum mechanical level or the level of particles and subatomic particles, it's the same general idea. So say we have an incoming proton and there's a bunch of electrons. Let's say there's this cloud of electrons that we're trying to hit. Now the thing about particles at these length scales is they're not exactly hard balls that are spherical, have a defined discrete boundary, etc. Instead, they're rather fuzzy probability clouds where the purple denotes where you're pretty likely to find one. So in this context, we can characterize each of them by a diameter of interaction. And from the proton's point of view, it actually sees these purple blobs of cross-sectional area from all of these diameters and we call the, uh, these cross-sectional areas of interaction the cross-section, a name that perfectly makes sense, the noted sigma, and it is measured in the units of area, so meter squared. In particular, particle physicists came up with this unit called the barn, which is equal to 10 to the minus 28 meter squared. So yeah, it's a unit of area. And in this case, we've got three particles, so our number of targets to hit is equal to three. And their total cross-section area would be equal to the number of targets times the cross-section of each target. And that makes intuitive sense. Now let's look at the maths of the incoming particle. So in this case, we've just shown one particle, but we could have a bunch of incoming particles coming, and they could be spaced out both in area or they could be spaced out in time so they can come in at different time intervals. So we, we want some kind of concept that encodes both of these things and the way we do that in particle physics is by defining this idea of flux. So we say f is equal to the number of incoming particles divided by the area in which we're measuring the number of incoming particles over times the time interval we're measuring. So the flux is really just the number of incoming particles per unit area per second or per unit time. Consequently, um, because this because this numerator quantity is unitless and this is measured in um, the units of area, so we can call that barn in this case, and this is measured typically in seconds. Um, we say that flux is measured in per barn per second. The unit of flux. 
So now the idea of luminosity comes in place when we want to relate this stream of incoming particles to the stream of particles available to hit. And that's where we can say L, the luminosity, is equal to the flux, which is a measure of the incoming particles, multiplied by the number of targets. So yeah, I guess you could sort of think of it as a kind of brightness where you have this is your incoming stream and these are the possible detectors you can have, so the number of places where you can recognize the stream. And this relationship becomes even clearer when we want to look at the number of scattered particles. So the number of scattered particles, I'll write it out in words and then explain it using these concepts we've built. So the number of scattered particles, well intuitively that's just the number of incoming particles per area per unit time times the total cross-section so the total area that we can hit essentially because we're multiplying it over number of targets available multiplied by the time interval we are conducting our, our collision experiment over so rewriting these in terms of particle physics concept the first fraction is just the flux the second uh, term, well, the second factor is d cross section times the number of targets. And last factor is just the time interval we're conducting a collision experiment over. Rearranging this, we can see that the number of scattered particles per second or per unit time is just equal to, well, we know that we could group these two together into luminosity. This is just equal to the luminosity times the cross-section of each target. And yeah, if you take the limit as our delta t goes to zero, this becomes the derivative or the rate at which particles get scattered is equal to the luminosity times sigma cross-section. And this is a really useful concept, but there's something you may have noticed over here. So over here we've assumed that throughout this entire time interval our flux is constant because that's the only way we could find the total number of incoming because we're assuming that the stream of particles we have is like fairly steady and it doesn't increase or decrease in time. Obviously it could increase and decrease in area but usually our cross sections are fixed for most experiments we look at. Um, in that our particle's area of interaction doesn't grow or shrink. But it's pretty reasonable to say our flux of particles coming out of our accelerator would vary with time to some extent. So in that case, we could instead work out the number of scattered particles as the time integral of flux multiplied by sigma number of targets. And sometimes we like to squeeze in that number of targets constant into the integral as well. So we get f times the number of targets integrated with respect to time times sigma. And this term over here is just the integral of luminosity with respect to time. And sometimes we like to call that the integrated luminosity or the cumulative luminosity over time. And that's measured in units of just area. So meter per second or just in barn because the time factor disappears because we're integrating over time. And that's luminosity. So yeah, you could think of it as a sort of brightness of your incoming stream of particles in terms of how they can interact with their, uh, with their targets available. But it is distinct from the ideas of luminosity in astronomy, for example. Hope you enjoyed.